today. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. We'll read verses uh, 14 through 16. Matthew 26, verses 14 through 16. Verse 14, it says, And then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto them, what, you, what will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Let's bow our heads for another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, uh, for your many, many blessings you send our way. Thank you for this beautiful day you've given us to be in your house. And Lord, open our hearts up to your word. If there be any, Lord, today that's uh, lost and undone, we ask you to save them today before it's everlasting too late. And uh, show us uh, the morsels of bread here in your word today, Lord, that we can, as your children, can live closer to you. We thank you. For all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, had so many, many things going for him, but also had so many things within him that uh, stood in the way of him being A believer. One group writer says this, Judas stands as a great warning to every man, including the strongest believer. Judas was one of the original 12 apostles chosen by Christ. He was a man with so much potential that he was chosen to serve with God's very own son during his earthly journey. But he failed and came ever so short. Just why he failed needs to be closely studied and heeded by all. I want to remind you about what happened just prior to these verses we're looking at today. A lady by the name of Mary had brought a very precious box of ointment, everything that she had, and had broken it and anointed Jesus' body and... Uh, you know, they got to complaining, why did she do that? Well, she's done what she could. Leave her alone. She's done what she could. She came to anoint my body for the burial. And as we talked about a couple weeks ago, I think when we was preaching in, the, in uh, Matthew 26, here on uh, verses 6 through 13, that see, she seemed to be the only one that heard anything that he said. He told them, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to die. On the third day, I'm going to rise again. So beforehand, here she is anointing his body for the burial. And we talked about a couple weeks ago, I believe it was, that uh, the ladies that came to the tomb, they brought the spices, they brought things, they was going to anoint the body of Christ, but there wasn't nobody there to anoint. He was risen already. So who was one of the main complainers here about what Mary did? Well, let's turn over to, uh, I believe it's John chapter 12. You'll turn over with me. Well, we'll start in verse 1. We won't read very far down through there, but uh, we're going to start in verse 1, kind of give you where we're at, why we call this Lady Mary and uh we call her Mary because her mother named her Mary, or somebody did. Uh, verse 1, John chapter 12. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead. Now, in chapter 11 of John, that's when Jesus had called him forth, Lazarus forth from the grave. Uh, Lazarus, which was, had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, there they made a supper. 
And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. And then here's what Mary does. We, we talked about that, Matthew 26, a couple weeks ago. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spinnakerd, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. So Matthew says that several of them got to complaining. Why, why was that done? But look who the main one was. Then saith one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said not that he cared for the poor. But because he was a thief, had to bag and bear what was put therein. So he wanted his bag to be just a little bit heavier. Or perhaps he had something that he saw at the store that he wanted to get. And he was just going to dig in there and get what he could and uh, enjoy. Because it did say he was a thief. So immediately after Mary broke that box of ointment, Verse 14, one of the twelve, Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest. John writes in his gospel and in 1 John in particular, that which we beheld, that which we've seen. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. And he said, these things that we, we declare unto you. He does that in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, Word was God, Word was with God. Same was in the beginning with God. John knew him. But Judas knew him too. He knew Jesus face to face. He walked with Christ day after day. He heard most, if not all, what Christ taught. He saw most, if not all, of what Christ did. He was trained to be an apostle by Christ himself. And he was warned of the sin's consequences that he was about to enter into. So, man, she just broke that. Man, I could have toted that around and... I think I go to see the chief priest. See what they got on their agenda. Ability. It's not ability that counts. It's availability that counts. So many gifted people in the world. Ability. They have the ability, but are they available to be used by Christ? In his book, In His Steps, Charles Sheldon, uh, well, I think it was back in the 1930s uh, when he wrote this. And uh, th this day and time, I think you can still buy a bracelet that got WWJD on there, but uh, what would Jesus do? I think all that was started in the 30s when Sheldon wrote that book. Because in that, it was uh, detailing the lives of several different people. And they were challenged to do this, to question themselves. Whenever they was making a decision, whenever something came their way that they had to decide, am I going to do this, am I going to do that, they asked themselves the question, well, what would Jesus do? And in that book, there's a young lady, a singer. And the way Sheldon describes her, she was some more singer. Sang solos at church. But also sang in the bar Saturday night. Sang in the bars on Friday night. And so when confronted with, what would Jesus do? She had the ability. Sometimes, you know, staying out late Saturday night, that solo didn't get sung at church. She wasn't available. Ability's still there. 
People love hearsay. But what would Jesus do? She gave up singing outside of church and started singing for the Lord. I believe there was a newspaper editor in that church who had this thing in mind. I, I, we've got to make money with this paper, so advertisements coming in left and right and uh, which advertisements you going to take. At one time, whoever showed up, are you run a what? Yeah. yeah, sell him my ad. You you run what? You you sell what? Yeah, uh, run, give him my ad in there. Just wreck it in money. And uh, what would Jesus do? So it changed to you operate a what? No, you can't advertise in my paper. You sell what? No, you you can't. You're not going to be advertising in my paper. Revenues went up. When he started operating by the thing, what would Jesus do? Money. Is it the root of all evil? Nope. What's the news this day and time? And in between uh, their agenda... Some time or where or another, you're going to hear the word economy. Because everybody's worried about economy. I wish we had a news that was worried more about eternity instead of economy. You can't buy your way there. The price done been paid. Turn over with me to Isaiah chapter 55. Just a minute, just, just for a verse or so. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number one. I learned as a pretty young fella what that first word means, so I, I don't have to look up and see what that first word there means. My granddaddy was, uh, I was, I was driving Granddaddy's Super C farm all up to the back field, and Granddaddy was sitting somewhere around me. I was about the third grade or so, and uh, he said, you stop, I'll get off and open the gate. He got about halfway off. When I heard this word, ho! I, I didn't ho, and he didn't have to open the gate. Stop. Everyone that's thirsty, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why? Why is it without price? Why is it free? Somebody once said, there ain't nothing free. Somebody paid the price. Well, salvation's free, but yeah, somebody did have to pay the price, and that's Jesus. Judas more worried about money than Jesus. Now, that woman did what? Uh, she broke out. Well, what will y'all give me if I give you Christ? What are you going to give me? So it's availability, not ability. Gifts do not ensure a Sure, permanent success. Christ alone does that. Walking among godly people, I, I believe in that. But walking among godly people, rubbing elbows with them, won't make you godly. Only Jesus can do that. Think of the people you've heard the truth of Christ. Think of the people who have heard the truth of Christ time after time, yet they still have not trusted him as the Son of God. And this group of writers says this, they're traitors, having turned their backs upon God. Therefore, 
they are guilty of high treason, treason against God. So uh, verse 14, Matthew 26, then one of the 12 called Judas Iscariot, same one that we find in John said, uh, we could have sold that and gave the money to the poor. No, you thief, you just wanted to weigh your money back down. And he said to them, verse 15, what will you give me? What will you give me? And I will deliver him to you. Now, we'll probably get to this a little bit later, a few weeks from now. But I want to ask you a question. And here's it is. here it is. If you, do you remember how he turned Jesus over to him? Now, I'm looking around this morning, and uh, back here at the back, well, to me it's the back, so we all say, well, that, that's the front door. Well, how can it be the back if it's the front door? We'll talk about that later. And along, why are we learning, trying to learn if that's the back door or front door? Uh, why do we park on the driveway and drive on the parkway? We'll try to figure that out as well. So back door, front door, whatever door that is, I'm looking at right yonder. It's a double door there. One of them's locked. One of them stays locked. Almost 100% of the time. I'm just going to go out and run him, and say 99 and 44, 100% of the time. It's locked. Everybody that's in here, I believe, maybe, maybe it's part of the Campbells, came through that door. I watched you. I think the Campbells came that way. Some of them. If we're going to get into heaven, we got to go into the door. And that door is Jesus Christ. We've got to go in through him. There's no other way. Can we go up and knock on the door and get in? Can we rattle the door and get in? Can we come in any other way? Judas went up to the door of heaven, kissed him, never did get in. Oh, he knows. He know. You ask him about him, if we was able to ask him anything about Jesus today, he could probably tell us more than what the Holy Spirit allowed man to write in God's Word. But he missed heaven. There's atheists today, I'm told, that uh, can quote Scripture all through the Bible. Yet they don't know, they don't believe in God, or so they say. So he goes to them. What you gonna give me? What are you gonna what you gonna give me for him? I'll turn him out, turn him over to you. And they agreed with him. Thirty pieces of silver. Thirty pieces of silver. You know, sometimes uh, you just have to think about money every now and then because, you know, you might get hungry. You might uh, get uh, this, that, and the other. Uh, Amy and I stopped and uh, picked up my prescriptions that they had ready one day this week. I'm every day running together these days. And uh, so I had a coupon, Miss Melanie. And it brought me back, Melanie, to about 1974. I got me a 20 ounce bottle of Diet Coke, I think it was. Or Coke Zero, one of the two. And a five little mini bars, Mr. Good Bar, 41 cents. You 
inflation hit a little bit because in 1974 when I started school, I could get a candy bar and a Mountain Dew for a quarter. So a little bit of inflation. If we turn over women to Genesis uh, chapter number 37, Judah had a, or, uh, Jacob had a son, 12 of them, one of them named Joseph. Joseph was his favorite. He'd given Joseph a tunic, a cloak, a coat of many colors, and uh, Joseph was a dreamer of dreams. God sent him dreams, allowing him to know what was going to come in the future, and he had told his brothers, that, hey, one day, y'all going to come bow down to me. And then told his daddy, he said, one day, you and mama are going to come, and all my brothers, and they're going to bow down to me. And so they, they just couldn't stand him. And uh, they were out keeping the flock, and uh, Jacob told Joseph, said, go, go out and check on them. And uh, they just had too much, and uh, they were aiming to kill him, and uh, one of them said, no, no that's, not, that's not kill him. So they threw him down in the pit, took his coat, killed an animal, covered that coat with blood, and sold him as a slave. Inflation hits every now and then. You know, uh, 1974, quarter for a Coke and candy bar. And because uh, of the coupon, I got Coke and candy bar for 40, 41 cents the other day. Inflation. Verse 28 of uh, Genesis 37. So here's what they did with Joseph. Then there passed by Midianites, merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph unto Pharaoh, uh, unto Pharaoh or in, unto Egypt. And uh, you say, well, how awful. Well, God placed him in Egypt or else the Israelites would have never survived. You say, well, that's a bad way to go. Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins. Judas sold him. Not for 20 pieces of silver, but for 30 pieces of silver. One group of writers said it's probably greed that Judas is following Christ. Probably greed. But, but there was something, you, you know, you have to th sit back and think there had to be something about him for him to get elected to be the money carrier. Even though John describes him as a thief. If you look back at Matthew 26, so what you going to give me for Jesus? I'll hand him over to you. Well, what about 30 pieces of silver? And so they agreed. In verse 16 of Matthew 26 says, from that time only, from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. We've talked about it already this morning, but turn over with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse number 10. It's not money that's bad. It's the love of money. And because of the love of money, Judas betrayed our Lord and Savior. Turned him over with a kiss. Tim, Paul writes Timothy, for the love of money is the root of all evil, while, uh, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. One guy writes, Judas allowed his strengths to be his downfall. 
And we could probably think of examples of this. Uh, gifts of administration can lead to being overbearing. Gifts of speaking can lead to be, being super spiritual. Gifts of leadership can lead to being self-seeking. Gifts of humility can lead to no service. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't possibly do that. Uh -huh. It's good to be humble. It's also be, it's good to be a willing vessel to allow God to use you. So Judas rejecting the one that could give him eternal life. Turn over with me to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Here we find, I don't, I don't think they give a name to this guy, but uh, it's a guy that had a job and he's striving to do it well. Paul and Silas were sent to prison and they uh, laid many stripes on them. And uh, told that jailers, you keep them safely. In other words, they, they got more business with them. You keep them safely. So here's what he does. He throws them in the inner prison. What would you and I do? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, might not have any fingernails left by the next morning. What did they do? Around about midnight, they began singing praises to God. God heard them singing praises. And uh, just by coincidence, now let's back up. Not by coincidence, an earthquake opened every door in that prison. Broke all the shackles off of every prisoner in that prison. And that jailer knew this. Why did he throw them in the inner prison? Because if they wasn't there the next morning, they was going to kill the jailer. And so when he wakes up out of his sleep, sees all the doors open, he's thinking about taking his own life. Later on, Judas goes out, takes his own life. Over 30 pieces of silver. But Paul cried out here, this Philippian jailer, and said, do yourself no harm. We're all here. And calling for a light, he sprang in, came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas. Now look down at verse 30. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What have I got to do to be saved? Well, uh, let's find a good pew and... Uh, if you can jump that pew, then you can be saved. No, that ain't what to tell them. Uh, I know. Let me give you some poison, and if you drink it, uh, if you survive, that means you're saved. No, that ain't what they told him. Uh, what'd they tell him? And they say it in verse 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If anybody ever had the opportunity to know about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, it would have been Judas. He rejected him. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved in thy house. They spake the word of the Lord to all that were in his house. He took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and his all, straightway. And when he had brought them to his house, he had them in prison. And now they're at his house. He said, Let meet before them and rejoice, believing in God with all his house. Judas. How much you gonna give me? 
I'll turn him over to you. 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. And he went up later and kissed the Lord, identifying which one they should arrest. The Bible says he went to his own place. That ain't heaven, by the way. Do you know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Judas was playing a good game. Man, he, he was the money man. If they wanted anything... They went to him. If they didn't have anything, Jesus sent them to a fish, remember? Pulled the coin out of the fish. Jesus was a money man. But he didn't trust in Jesus. He betrayed him. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the opportunity that you've given each one of us in this life to trust you as Lord and Savior. Lord, if there's one that's uh, never accepted you that's listening to me today, we pray that uh, this day will be the day of salvation for them. Uh, we can't put it off to tomorrow. We can't put it off the next week. We need to do business today. Because of your word says we need to call upon you while you're near. And Lord, may we be doing that today. If we are lost and undone, may we come to get saved. If we're uh, indifferent about this, that, and the other, about your work, about your business, Lord, uh, our indifference needs to be fixed. Have your own way in each one of our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as James and...